long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. So LSU football is just finishing up, celebrating the national championship with a parade this weekend. The emotions finally hit the team Saturday during the celebration in the PMAC. But people outside of LSU country probably haven't been paying attention to what people are now starting to say about the future of LSU's program. And they shouldn't because the LSU fan base should be enjoying this moment. So enjoy it. But the national media is already talking about Coach O being a one-hit wonder. In America, we have this obsession wanting to see successful people fail almost, if not more, than we want to see them have success story. In America, we like to build you up and tear you back down again, but LSU and Ed Ogeron's championship is a little different. When Nick Saban won his first title at Alabama or Pete Carroll at USC or Jimbo Fisher at Florida State, we just couldn't wait to build them up for a little bit more success. No one was talking about their downfall because the media had higher standards for those coaches, and not Ed Ogeron. Ed Ogeron is just a one-hit wonder who got lucky with the right quarterback, defensive coordinator, and fell ass backwards in finding Joe Brady. They'll go back to 9-3, and 8-4 and four every year, and Ed Ogeron will probably get fired four or five, maybe six years from now. I'll bet you anything Ed Ogeron loves this. I bet you anything Ed Ogeron loves hearing this. Well, remember, Ed Ogeron is the same coach who lost to Troy three years ago. Yeah, and Nick Saban lost to UL Monroe his first year and won a national title in his third year, just like Ed Ogeron. But Joe Burrow is leaving. You got lucky with the quarterback. You didn't know he was going to be this good. Okay. Everyone you talk to says Miles Brennan is more naturally talented than Burrow. Matt Flynn, the former LSU quarterback, national championship quarterback, has been to several practices, along with other former LSU players. And Burrow, even himself, will all tell you that Miles Brennan is more naturally talented than Joe Burrow. And if that's not enough to convince you, LSU was in the running to get another grad transfer quarterback at the University of Houston named De'Eric King. For those of you who don't know, De'Eric King had the second highest quarterback rating in 2018. And last year, King broke Tim Tebow's record for most consecutive games with a passing and rushing touchdown in NCAA history. That guy was interested in coming to LSU, and Coach O said, No, nah, I got Miles Brennan. We good. Yeah, but LSU just lost a bunch of starters, and including nine underclassmen. Y'all are just losing all your talent. <clears throat> really? Losing all the talent? Let me read you a list of the star ranking of the potential starters for LSU next season. This is their recruiting ranking coming out of high school. Offense, six five-star recruits and eight four-star recruits. The quarterback who we've already established is more natural. You, unless you're blind, you can clearly tell he throws the ball better than Joe Burrow. Is a four-year junior, an experienced four-year junior. Another five-star recruit is the number one wide receiver in high school. The other receiver is the Bolitnikoff winner from last year as the best receiver in college football. And the number one running back coming out of high school as well. Oh, and the highest graded tight end in the history of high school football is also coming to LSU next season. Defense, five five-star recruits, seven four-star recruits. One was the number one safety coming out of high school. He'll be a senior. Another was the number one defensive tackle coming out of high school who could have left and potentially been a first-round draft pick. He's coming back for one more year. And the cornerback, who was the number one overall recruit in the country, as a true freshman, made the AP first team All-American team. Please tell me Please tell me how LSU doesn't have any talent coming back next year just because you don't follow LSU close enough. So therefore, if you don't know their names and if you don't see returning starters, therefore, LSU is not going to be as talented. Yeah, but y'all lost your, your coordinators. Talent doesn't matter if you don't have good coordinators. I'll remind you that Joe Brady did not call the plays last year, nor was he the offensive coordinator. 
that would be Steve Ensminger. And as for Dave Aranda, you mean to tell me Coach O, a defensive coach in his own right, isn't going to hire another defensive coordinator that's worth a damn? Charles Hanegriff at 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge is already reporting this morning that people inside of that building are saying Coach O expected to get a lot of interest for the opening for the defensive coordinator job at LSU, and it is 10 times more interest in this job opening than he than Coach O could have ever imagined. Everybody wants to coach at LSU right now. They have all the talent and the money and the job security that you could want for moving your family across country. But yes, please tell me how Coach O won't find another good coordinator. And I said this last week, and I'll say it again this week. In the past 17 years, LSU has played in four national championship games, won three of them with three different head coaches, four different defensive coordinators, and four different offensive coordinators. The hardest thing to do, other than get to the mountaintop, is to stay at the mountaintop. And if you're Coach Ed Ogeron, you got to love the media saying your success is a one-hit wonder. So enjoy this, LSU fans. The show goes on. On to the next sport. LSU basketball started out uh, rough this season, and when everyone was doubting if LSU would make the tournament after a slow start, I would say LSU was on track to win the SEC, and all I heard was, Nick, you're crazy. So I checked something called the SEC men's basketball standings this morning, and, well, what do you know? LSU is number one in the SEC, 5-0 and in conference, won 12 straight SEC road games, all while playing below their potential. They haven't even peaked yet. There's a moral to this story. Nick, you're always right. No, I'm not always right, and sucking up will get you nowhere. But the point of this story is, in any emotional situation, in any emotional situation, especially sports. You know what you do? Just take a deep breath and let's think about it. Don't react to exceptions. Look at the whole body of work. When something happens in sports, good or bad, look for patterns. Look for the common denominators. Look for similar situations that have happened before. LSU plays Tuesday night in the PMAC against a damn good Florida team. It's going to be packed. There's going to be motivation. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, boot up. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, 